Hello, 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 hello. I hope you can hear me. I see Steve DeLuna's in here. Thank you, Steve, for being here. Yes, I am remiss. I apologize. We were at, I say we, I say we, uh, myself and uh, DJ were at the Mavs game today. I don't know whether you had a chance to see me on Instagram or on Facebook. I did a live video from the uh, the Mavericks game at the very beginning. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. And uh, wow. I mean, it was a, uh, it was, went to overtime. The Mavericks were down, what, 22 points in the first half. And by the end of the first half, they were down five. They still just could tried to, you know, keep things going and going and going. But, you know, it took a while for them to chip away. Excuse me, chip away. Hello, Facebook user. I don't know who you are, sir or ma'am. But good evening to you. It, uh, thank you for thank you for being on Facebook. If you can go over to YouTube, and the reason why I say that is because the the imagery and the sound is a lot better on YouTube. I swear, I'm not just pushing YouTube. But you can also I can also see who is coming in, who it is. Because like I say, I can I can show this. For example, I can show that Steve DeLuna says, and thank you, Steve, for being here. What's happening? Happening, Captain Jack. Build them trenches. Enjoy great Raider football for many years. Thank you, and we will be doing that. I'm actually getting a chance to do that a bit on this trip. Um, for those that don't know, I left. It was supposed to be the second, but I ended up leaving the third, which was Wednesday. I left Wednesday from Tampa. I was en route Jacksonville, but then on you know, I four, then I took a detour in Orlando back to the northwest. So I went from northeast to northwest, and I've been hitting traffic everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I've been hitting traffic. So I'm like a traffic magnet. Hit it in the uh, at the end of the uh, expressway, or the should say the Florida Turnpike in Wildwood. I wasn't able to get to an internet for the uh the wild wild west show which which was upsetting because i always you know i always try to hit my shows thursday i'm in picayune mississippi and uh with 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 my friends uh some saint fans love T uh tina turner <laughs> tiffany turner <laughs> tina turner rolling on the bay you know the proud mary you know but then it's tiffany turner and her husband bead man and uh, got it, had a chance to uh, hang out with them for a day. Then rolled through Interstate 10 and I-10 I and then I-12. We met up with 10, going west. The next night was in Houston with folks of Space City. I want to make sure I get it right, too. Space City Raider Nation. Some great friends there. Then yesterday I went from Houston to Dallas. We had a mind. Yeah, yeah. I was I, I know that, Chris. It's like you were telling me that. It's like an earthquake in, in Pennsylvania is definitely newsworthy. I hope that you're okay, sir. But uh, so yeah, I went from Houston to Dallas. Last night I was over at Shit Show Joe's home um with a with a, with a with crawfish uh boil great folks there great raider nation folks there plus some other folks you know family there so i went went to that picked up my friend dj or jd see I, I, now i'm dyslexic it's jd long story so jd has me staying this is the guest room where I'm here, was there here last night, woke up today, uh, watch, oh, by the way, you will love this house if you are a fan of Seinfeld, because Seinfeld's on a loop in the house, you know, as, as background noise, 
it's great because I love I love Seinfeld. What like, like what, what episodes did I see? I saw the Shrinkage episode, it's either last night or today. I saw um, well, that was the main one I remember. It was the Shrinkage, which is which is the baby. Oh, you got to see the baby. Come see the baby. And there was a, another Newman episode where uh, uh, Jerry was going out with this girl that used to go out with Newman. And he's so put off by that because how can this beautiful woman have gone out with Newman? Hello, Newman. So that was on. So anyway, we're watching Seinfeld. Then, then we get ready for the basketball game. And the, the first off, like I said, before I do anything else, and I've already, like I said, Thank you and blessings to Tiffany Turner and her husband and thank you. Thank you to Carla and Mark and Jesse and Steve in Houston. Thank you to Shit Show Joe and the crew that was over at his uh, crawfish uh, feed yesterday. Thank you to was it Henry Cantu and his wife and Pepsi and uh, Karen Metters who met us a couple of minutes ago over at one of the restaurants after the game. So I can see as many people as possible. It, it's it's heartwarming. It, it, it is heartwarming that I get a chance to see these people on this trip. And I'm not done by not even a stretch done yet. Uh, tomorrow, when everybody else is looking up into a cloud covered sky for the eclipse, I will be heading west. My plan is hopefully here. Let me do the, the fingers. My plan is to get to Las Cruces, New Mexico, or at least somewhere close to that. Bed down for the night and then head on over. So hopefully we'll be in Arizona the following day. And again, while we're giving out thanks again to the people that have seen me, again, special thanks to J.D. and his, and his beautiful lady, Drew, for letting me stay the night for two nights not just one but two nights with the old bastard captain you know and in a, a great room great cats uh, uh tiffany tiffany's house had uh i don't know if i said this right but it had three pit bulls loving big and the big pit bulls right just loving pit bulls just jump up and, and want to give you kisses, you know. And I, I'm not, I'm, I said, I, lo I, I like animals. I don't have any, but I like animals. So the pit bulls would jump up and they're so loving. And and, and the one was uh, just, a, it was awesome. So when they woke me up the other day, they they jumped and they licked, you know, licked me. And then they, they two of them went behind me and just kind of like snuggled up against me from the back. And it, like I said, it is beautiful animals. And then here, in the house here, there is um, a, a very loud cat named Tiger, 19 years old. And row, row, beautiful. And then just, and I can pet it and, and just, you know, just, it, and it'll sit down and, and allow me to pet it. But the other cat, and I don't, I didn't catch the name of the other cat. So, uh, JD, if, you, if, you, if you're watching, and yeah, because he's in the next room, he says, I'm putting this on the big screen. I'm like, oh my God, I'm ugly enough. I don't imagine how ugly I am on, on the big screen. The second cat is very aloof and very, I'm not scared, but it's, I'm, you know, stranger danger. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person that's not supposed to be in the house, but at least it's getting a little bit more used to me. It, it like when I was the first night, it would, kind of like look at me and like very slowly crawl across the floor keeping its eye on me but i love cats too i love animals hey nick how you doing there sir i hope everybody's good uh, cool kev thank you for the beer you know cabin with the beer got that as well and not, and thank you for that I, I i said i like this hat it's a it's a leather uh i don't know what the type you would call it like a kepi Maybe in the Civil War, it would be close to being a kepi, but it's a leather, kind of like a golf, the old golf hat or an old Harley hat. But yeah, it's, it's I've, I've had this hat forever. In fact, when I was going to truck driving school, this one, I, it's like, dude, I want your hat. I'm like, no, you ain't, get, you ain't getting my hat. Yeah, it's like, no, nah, no, you're not getting my hat because I've had this hat forever and it's a great hat. But thanks, Kev, for that. 
So if you're watching and you're wondering what the fuck I'm talking about, this is normal. Oh, he, yeah, here's here's the scared. Here's the, literally the scaredy cat. See, it, it, this is there, there's JD. This is beautiful cat, but scared. You can you see see how it's like it's trying trying to get away. All right, it's a beautiful cat. And he'd get like and boom, it would be out of the room in a minute. That was JD. JD hopefully might be back later. Uh, but tigers, you know, tigers wow. Loud. But it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful for being on this trip. I'm going west. I'm gonna see as many people as possible. Plans are as of like I say, it was two nights in Dallas here in, in the the JD homestead. Uh, a night on the road will be somewhere either before or in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I'll, I'll stay in the truck. I don't know if you guys saw, I said I had that bed already installed in the back of the truck. I'll have that ready to go. Then the next day, um, in, in and around Phoenix, today we, we were already talking with, was it, uh, Oh my goodness! Uh, the, the gentleman, League Nation, Arizona, and Joker, Joker Raider, and and uh, Raider Wolf, we were we were FaceTiming them. So if they if they're here, if they're watching, they might not be watching. Yeah, they're probably you know, having fun. It's Sunday, and Wolf is out there for the the final four. So he's going to see some really really good basketball. Did did the uh, I don't. I said it's the finals tomorrow, right? Because again, when I'm on this, I don't. I'm, I watch what I can. I do know that South Carolina won in the women's bracket because I had some of the things where it said Caitlin Clark lost her last game uh, as uh, you know in college bat. What a great story that was! So basketball is is wonderful when you watch it or can engage in it. Hey, Jimmy, how are you doing? Jimmy Farrell, a.k.a. Radio. In fact, let me see here. So, John put some folks on. Jacqueline, thank you. Hello, Captain. Hello, Jacqueline. How you doing? This was cool, Kev. It's like giving me the beer and the uh, the nice hat. Nick Marquez over on Facebook. And the other folks, uh, what did I say? It was Chris Lentz on Facebook. And a good evening from somebody who's on my profile. It doesn't identify you. And, again, Raider Eor, a.k.a. Jimmy Farrell. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Jimmy Farrell. And Nick Marquez, I, I don't, I don't see what you said, brother, but that's fine. But uh, you know, it, talking it. Let's get back to the basketball. Like I said, the uh, the fact that you know, Caitlin Clark, great storied collegiate career with the most, with the most points ever, beating Pistol Pete Maravich in a record that they said would never be broken. It was kind of like the uh, the the basketball coach over at Stanford, the women's basketball coach at Stanford, bested Coach K's mark. So give the ladies props, you know, give them props that they they can be just as athletic and just as exciting as whatever product you're you're out there. And again, I don't know, I don't know who. Is going to be playing the men's basketball finals tomorrow. I don't know. I do know that Gino Oriema, because a uh, Ken Clark was in the finals. I know that Iowa beat um, UConn, so I know that Gino is still looking for that another national championship. Asylum, good to see you, brother. And Mike, was it Michael Merker? Good to see you as well. How you doing? Uh, Delta Delta Pack, thank you. Is new, our new our new viewer, Delta Pack. What woman do you think would make it in the NBA? Damn good question. It, it's it's always a matter of I tell you, Caitlin Clark and 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 the young lady from UConn. I can't remember what her name is. Would make it, but whether they can, and, and this is not a slam at women. It's not. Whether that they can take the physicality of banging around gentlemen that are bigger than them would would be you know it, that's you know 
that's why they have the, the WNBA. And by the way, Caitlin Clark and, and Brooke, the, the young lady from UConn, that's wonderful. UConn, okay, UConn versus Purdue. So I know Purdue was the number one seed. And they were saying that she she would or Purdue has been like that's the, the they were the number one number one seed if I'm not mistaken. UConn will give them a game. Um, uh, was it not Bobby Hurley, but the other Hurley uh, is their coach. Great program with UConn, so that's going to be a damn good game. So tomorrow, maybe well maybe I'll, I'll put on the radio because I, I usually use uh, get Sirius XM. Maybe I'll pop it over to hear the, the actual game as I'm going going west. Ed Winchell, good to see you, sir. Only a more, few more days, Ed. Only a few more days. And I'll be heading out to see Ed over in L.A. I love L.A. A little Randy Newman for you. But it's going to be uh, – uh, so hopefully uh, maybe I'll get off the road and maybe I'll go to a sports bar. If I don't get the last – it just depends on where I'm at but I might take a break and watch the game. We'll see. Kaylee, how you doing? Kaylee McLaughlin, how you doing there, Sonny? Good to see you as well. Thank you for By the way, again, as y'all know, like, like, share it up, share it up, share it up. Share up the YouTube if you can. Like I said, better audio, better video. And, and we'll, we'll uh, have it together. Good to hear from Kaylee. Kaylee's still over in, in Illinois area. And always a Great, uh, great contributor and person that pops in on the channel. Kelly, how did your uh, – did you do the uh, the duck thing yet or the plunge yet? I get so busy on certain things. I'm sorry. I, I'm remiss if I, if I don't remember stuff. I'm getting old too. People come up to me and I'm, I, I know that person, but I don't remember their name. So, by the way, if I see you and the name doesn't click, it's not you, it's me. Sometimes – it's not there. Matt Rinovich, ahoy to you as well. Thank you for being here, sir. So, yeah, we, so we got UConn versus Purdue. That That's going to be a great matchup. The matchup today, like I said, Mavericks, Houston Rockets, and they, they don't like each other. Houston has always been a very combative team going back to, you know, was it the Kermit Washington and Rudy Tomjanovich uh, skirmish in the um, – in the NBA years ago, if you don't know what about it, you look up Rudy Tomjanovich, Kermit Washington, Rockets, Lakers, the, the combative 70s. But uh, the, uh, you know, NBA back when. But again, Houston does not like Dallas. And they were they were blowing they were blowing Dallas's socks off the floor today up 22. It was a great, great game. Delta Pack for with another question. Okay, let's see. If you were the GM of all time, what sport, Delta? Uh, what sport? If I'm the if I'm the general manager of all time, who is your first week? What sport? Brian, thank you for that question. Frozen Four this week. Frozen Four, great. You know, hot the hockey final four. Frozen Four, great. Usually on oh, basketball. Mm, okay. Okay, so basically you're asking me who I think would be the best basketball player to be taken first overall. I'm, I'm, I'm th because there, there are people that are saying that are like, uh, I, I'm sorry, it, it's, it's different eras, but I'm not going to go. I'm, I'm, I would take Mike. Got to be Mike, Michael Jordan. Why? Because. Michael Jordan was the epitome, the, the, that guy that Magic Johnson wanted to be, that Larry Bird wanted to play and beat, the, the guy that Kobe Bryant aspired to be. When you're that guy, that tells you things. Now, of course, if you go back to the big body area, you have people like Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. And before that, you have George Mikan and Bob Cousy. But it, the basketball back then was a, was a bit of a – it was slower, and it wasn't as refined. So I would say Michael Jordan. I would say Michael Jordan. I hope that answers your question there, Delta. I don't know if, who you would pick. Um, Kobe in the nine in the nine. No, like I said, if if you have somebody that is aspiring to be the next of this, 
why not get the person that they're aspiring to be? It's Michael Jordan. It's Michael Jordan. Shaq. Shaq was dominant. But do you what would first off, are you gonna you that's why the hack of Shaq was such a thing in the playoffs, you know, just put him on the foul line and you know, let him let him brick free throws. He's not gonna win the game on, on a, a God forbid if he's on the foul line. Jordan's going to make those free throws. Jordan's going to make those jump shots. Jordan's going to do everything. And and I agree to a point with with Matt. You know, Bill Russell. How many how many championships does Bill Russell have? But remember, though, Bill Russell also played with Bob Cousy, and and uh, what, what was it? Jones actually two Joneses. And the other, so that team was formidable, formidable. Bill Russell was the best of the best on that, you know, with Russell and Cousy and Jones. But, you know, it it, it, it was a great team. I'm, st- I'm still taking Jordan. Again, I, I, I hope, thanks, Delta said. I, <laughs> I appreciate that, that. I appreciate that you liked my answer. El Capitan Rafucho. Salute to you. I am doing fine, sir. Thank you. And yeah, 11 ships and two as a coach. So yeah, but I, I'm a Jordan fan. I've, I've always liked, you know, North Carolina from Dean Smith on, even, even when, um, when Dean retired and uh, was it Williams came over from uh, Kansas Big fan of Dean Smith. Big fan of Williams from Kansas. I like I like Self, who went and took the Kansas job after Williams went over. I love co- I love college basketball this time of year. I'm getting to be into where I enjoy the pro game, but not until, and I, I've said this several times, not until you get to the conference championships because it. Before then, who cares, right? You got to win to stay in. And by the time you get to the conference championship or the final four in the NBA, (coughs) pardon me, that's entertaining basketball. That's entertaining basketball. And uh, watching today, you know, Kyrie put up 48. Uh, Was it Doncic put up, uh, was it like 32 or 34? And then the other players contributed. But, you know, when you see Luca putting up points and, and like Kyrie just basically taking over the game, and they were down, like I said, they were down 22 points. I thought this was going to be a blowout. I was like, oh, my goodness. Uh, JD's not going to invite me to any more basketball games because you know, I'm the bad luck charm that came in. And, uh, you know, just, you know, the with the way the Mavs are playing. But they, they turned around, thank God. So what are you watching? Oh, my goodness. What did I just put up? I, I just grabbed something. Uh, okay, I don't need Microsoft. No, no, no. Why is why did my Microsoft pop in? Let me get rid of Microsoft. I don't know. I must have touched something. But what are we watching tomorrow? Obviously, the the... The, the finals of the final four. If you're in this area, like I said you were supposed to be watching a, a total eclipse, but you ain't gonna see nothing but clouds. But what what else is there? You know, it's a Sunday, and it's remember this is our day. This is the Sunday day, football day, or or the end of basically the end of uh, you know your your three or four game sets, right? And you know, I, I just missed that. Yeah, DJ Fluker, you're gone. Resign Jordan Meredith. Yeah, Matt. I tell you what, I was I saw something today in passing that Dalton Dalton Risner, who was the guard for many years with the Broncos, they're saying it would be a very good fit for the Raiders. I agree. I think he'd be a better fit than, uh, and that's one of the reasons why they cut Fluker is because Fluker can't stay healthy. DJ Fluker, when he was you know healthy, was a very very good pick. Jordan Meredith was a good good pickup signing as far as um, depth, but I'd rather have Dalton Risner. 
Uh, okay, and Dar Delta comes in and says what? So he's giving us an explanation. Ah, uh, okay, let's see here. Why Shaq? Because Mike needed refs to get him there. When his dad died, they negated his. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. The, the the Jordan rules existed for a reason. They did. They existed for a reason. But you can't deny his talent. And yeah, I, I get kind of sick. I do get did get kind of sick of the Jordan rules. But the NBA knew when he had a cash cow. That's why Jordan and Magic and Bird, when they were playing, like in the NFL, when Brady was playing, you had the Brady rules, and now you have the Mahomes rules. Right, You're, the the leagues are not going to take their cash cow off of the market because of injury or get them out of the playoffs. Yeah, it was it's infuriating to watch. So when the Raiders actually beat the Chiefs on Christmas, they are the last team to beat the Super Bowl champs. You have to overcome. The team you're facing that gets the that gets the calls and the damn zebras. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And yet yeah, Shaq rules was because he was yeah he was too dumb. But then again he also had the what was it the uh, oh uh, the, the the quarterback that played for uh, University of Florida and then Auburn and then went to the Panthers. He had his rules because he was so dominant. He was so dominant uh, for brain fart in his name, but yeah, he, he didn't get the, he didn't get the, he wasn't as glamorous dominant and he got, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't given all of the, the things that could have helped him out because he was so damn big. So, you know, he didn't get quite all the rules. Dalton Richard would be a nice addition. I agree. Mm -hmm. You got a Delta Cam Newton. I, I appreciate you popping in with that answer. So anyway, it is, hey, we've been talking half an hour already. If you want to come into the show, come on screen. And you've already, you've already seen me on screen. You already saw, you already saw, you know, uh, JD and, and the aloof cat when it was like almost scratching JD's arm to get out. It was like he was looking at the camera like, get me out of here. And you didn't get a chance to hear Tiger, but Tiger's a Tiger's a, a beautiful, very loud cat. And again, blessings and my deep thanks to them. Obviously, JD and and Drew and all the folks that I've had a chance to see on this trip. I I wish I could I wish I could spend more time everywhere. And I wish I had more. What's what I'm looking for? More. Um, I'm going to be on here on this date. Because you know people that I, I that I can't wait to see, like for example, right on cue too, Raider Squid, my shipmate, and my brother in the United States Navy. Good evening to you, sir. I'm going to be seeing him when I get out to California. When I do not know because I got to go through Arizona, stay a couple nights in Phoenix. I'm going to be going through Yuma, and then I'm going to be going through San Diego. Then I'm going up to LA a couple days with Ed and then I'm going north and I'm going to see squid hopefully when I get into that area. So I don't know when it's going to be. And I, I, I try to give folks like a day or two, at least a day notice, but I'm, I, I'm not on any set schedule. That's why people say, are you going to drop? I said, yes, I'm going to have to, I know I'm going to have to change my flight because there's no way in hell I'm going to be in Tampa on the 24th. There's no way in hell. I'm being Tampa on the 24th because, again, I got the Northern Northern Cal to come in, right? Got to go NorCal. I got to go Reno. I got to go Vegas, hang out with Power Raider for a little while. You know, it'll be great. But, yeah, Delta Pack, yeah, come on in. Please do, sir. That's why I put the link up. Uh, like I said, make sure you hit the link. And for those, I know that I saw some of the uh, folks that were popping over on Facebook. I know that Becky was over there. Becky, cheers to you as well. Uh, I got to have my tea. You guys know that. Either my Arnold Palmer or my teas. But yeah, Delta, come on in. But hit the, hit the link. Come on in. 
enjoy having you. And, uh, you know, I, I had, if I, if, if you're new to the show, thank you for popping in. It's great to have you come into the show. Remember, if you want to talk sports, we're already, uh, we're already half an hour into what will be a, at most for my audience over on the Northeast Streaming Sports Network, we're actually going to be uh, off the channel about 58 minutes because my timeline on Northeast Streaming Sports is going to end at a certain time. But let me take my hat off here. Wait, wait a second here. It's hot. It's hot. Remember, hats hats keep the heat in. So, but yeah, Delta Pack, come on in. Hit the link. Hit the link. Hit the link. I hope you can see the links. Make sure that you uh, give your um, say yes. I, I wanna. I want to uh, come in. Make sure you can. Make sure that your audio more than anything. The camera is okay. Don't worry about the camera. Make sure your audio is working. But what else? What are you watching tonight? So we got got Chris coming up. Let's see here, Chris uh, up. Let me let me get the right screen on. There you are. How you doing there, sir? What's going on with you today? I, hey man, I just I loved your conversation. I loved our interaction. I was like, why not? I'm why not? not? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. The only thing that's scary about me is my appearance. Okay. Man, that's that's like, the only thing that's scary about me. Dude, you're like the second Santa Claus. You ain't scary. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually had a I actually had a, a note uh so, somebody to remain and I, I won't dime them out, but there it was it was a it was a very negative one at on uh, via Instagram. It said and it was uh, Keep your keep keep my family out of your Santa Claus mouth. I'm like, dude, who who <laughs> who did I piss off? And and I won't go into the conversation, but the Santa Claus comment was made. Keep like you know like like the Will Smith you know keep right. my family's name out of your motherfucking. Mouth. But instead of motherfucking, it was your Santa Claus mouth, and it ended up like what, the conversation went from there. It was. It was some things that I didn't didn't necessarily know was going on, and I I said, hey, don't worry. I, I, I once I know things, you know, I can't I can't fix things unless I know they're broke, right? If there's an issue, I can't fix it until you tell me what the fucking issue is. I found out the issue. I said, we are good to go, man. You don't have to worry about. It. Keep my fucking family's name out of your motherfucker. Well, he didn't say motherfucker, but out of your Santa Claus mouth. So that's why I said when you gave the Santa Claus crack, that could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. But welcome to the show, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's just another day in paradise, I guess. And, and where, where are you at? Where are you at there, Chris? I, I am in <clears throat> North Little Rock, Arkansas. North Little Rock. Yeehaw. Sweet. Hey, listen to him. He knows a little something. I'm a, hey, partner, I'm SCC, man. I'm a Gator. There we go. Okay. Uh, I'm a, yeah, no, no, wait. Before you before you say anything, okay, our our brother Wade, uh, uh, Wade, who is like, uh, 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 I'm trying to, his character, is who's the guy that uh, was, that wears the suit? He's an X-Men type. He has the two. The two knives, two you know the the katana knives, uh, Deadpool, right? Okay. Wade is a is a is an Arkansas fan, and we and we you know it's like every year like oh, I kick your out, and it's fun because it's SEC. And I saw the end of the Arkansas. I didn't see the I didn't see any of it until like about the last ten minutes of the Arkansas game, and Arkansas always. Always gives the Gators a hard time, but it was a good game. And, and he said, "You know, as I saw the end of it, and uh, can't remember the kid's name. The Florida quarterback pulled it out of his ass, but it was entertaining. Just the last ten minutes of the game that I saw was entertaining. I never badmouth Arkansas football because they are always a well-coached team that will get after you." So there's nothing wrong with being a fan 
of the Razorbacks, Barner. Good to go. Uh oh. Uh oh. You're, no. you're, shaking your head. you're shaking your head. Okay. I disagree with everything you just said. Okay. Well, then enlighten uh, me. Enlighten me, sir. Well, okay. And I didn't come on here for college football. I just. But, 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 but I led you there. You can, you can go on for college, and then we can go back to basketball. So right. you, you enlighten me as well. Amen. And I'll try to keep this as short and sweet as possible. But, um, the history of Arkansas football is Petrino was on the way to getting us to the promised land. Yeah, I believe I, I believe that. Yes, sir. Even, even though Nick Saban is over there like as emperor of the world as far as college football is concerned, Petrino's like, fuck that. We're we're gonna do this. And yeah. He, I mean, look, when the SEC West in one year has the number one, two, and three ranked teams in the nation. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were doing some shit over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when he. And, 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 see, and then, see, here's the and then. And right. then. And that's right. the unfortunate thing. It's and then. The and wheels it, fell off of Petrino's organ because of because of Nookie, right? And it's the same shit that he did when he was in Louis. Yeah. You know, you know who what his song should be? And who who does it? Is it is it I can't remember. I did it all for the Nookie. What the Nookie? What the you know, it's like there and it kicked it in eh, kicked it in eh, you know, and I know I'm fucking up the word, but whatever that song is, that's Petrino's. If he was in baseball, right? And he was going up to the backs. That would be his walk-up song. I did it all for the nookie. What the nookie? What the nookie? What? Because that, that's Petrino. That that nookie fucked him. You know what though? It was it, it. This aside though. That aside. This aside. Um, I remember. I don't know. Like it was. It wasn't the director. It might have been the director of athletics. Yeah, the AD. Yeah. Whoever fired him, uh -huh. you know, made a press conference the next day after that motorcycle bitch encounter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He he came on and was like, we got to let him go. And dude cried, man. And I and seriously, I was like, fuck it. It's just a 20 year old bitch. Let him have it. I don't care. Keep him. Yeah, it's like good for him. He's it's fucking crazy. a twenty. He's fucking a good looking twenty year old. Good I, for him. I, look, I could give a fuck. There you go. But they let him go. Um, who was it? Joe Smith or some dumb fucking name that you can't even Google that finished his season out. Yeah. Um, and then we had Bielema, and then we had Sam Pittman. Yeah, Biel Bielma sucked. I mean, when he when he left Bielma Wisconsin, was absolutely he garbage. Was he was ass. It was fucking horrible. And you know what? And and this is this is the one thing. If if like let's say God said, Chris, save Arkansas football. I already had the answer. It was already given to me. You know why? Because Charlie Strong. Us! Yes! Charlie Strong was right there for the picking. Yes! And, yes! And, and outside of that, I don't know if you know this, but I grew up with Charlie Strong's nephew. Okay. You know that Charlie Strong had connections to Arkansas. Yeah. He has a million. Charlie Strong, that might have been, like, the ultimate key. It, I mean, it might have been. I, I'm just – I know. I, I agree with you there because I know Charlie Strong through his ties with Florida and USF, and then he went over and got fucked at Texas because if he would – if Charlie Strong would have been able to do what he was enabled to do or they would have let him fucking go – Charlie Strong would have done the same thing that they finally got with Sarkeesian. 
okay? But Charlie Strong would have done it, and it would have been a better program, okay? Let, let, let me stop you on this point right now. And yes, sir. I don't want to, like, divert the com conversation to something completely different. Okay. But it I is a very... That. It is a very uh, interesting question because I agree with you. U UT fuck Charlie Strong. Yes, I mean, they, they did. did. They didn't even give him a chance. Without even the benefit of KY. Not even a, not even a chance. So <laughs> we agree on that fact. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So cat's coming out of the hat. Um, there you go. Does Charlie Strong get more of a chance in Texas if he's white? I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah, just a little, and I get, here, just that much more of a chance, right? That much if, more, because Texas, because Texas is Texas is Texas, right? Yeah. If you if you want to go back to and you you saw the movie uh, the the one about the uh, oh the, the kid out of out of Syracuse Ernie uh, 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 the kid that followed Jim Brown and it was Ernie I can't remember what the what the guy's last name was but he followed uh, he followed Jim Brown at Syracuse Ernie I can't remember his name he ended up going to Ernie Davis Ernie Davis the Express. And, and when Syracuse went down to play Texas in the Cotton Bowl and Texas, even though that they have integrated in theory, it it's still it's still Texas. It's still the good old boy network. And it, it'll always be that way. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, and I think you agree with that there. Kwame, I see Kwame is out there. Kwame, don't, don't worry. We're going to get to Kwame in a minute. He's in the backstage. Chris, I, I, I diverted you. And you wanted to talk basketball. But I, this is me. It, it, by the way, uh, where did you find the show, sir? Online. I'm a hacker. I'm sorry. but No, whatever. Uh, but we'll welcome in because sometimes that there are people that are new and I have to watch because a lot of them are not a lot, but some of them are trolls, right? So the right. one guy, one guy came on a hat on camera and he was talking for five seconds, and all of a sudden I see a a, a, of a dude with, with with a 12 inch schlong, you know, I, and of course I had to boot him for and it, it was fun, you know, because that, it's a troll, but I have to be aware that I have I get the like the dump button. There is no dump button, there is no seven second delay. But I have to be aware because if they're new and I don't know who you are, I was like, okay. And, and it was a it was a Delta Pack, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. And so I'm. And by the way, welcome to the show. Tell your friends. I'm. I'm an. I'm an old salty fuck, retired Navy Raider fan, but sports guy, right? I will talk, and then I allow you to talk too. So before we like, because Kwame's a, a, a backstage, right? Before before we get to Kwame, don't go anywhere, Kwame. Sir, you tell me about what your what your thoughts were. So yeah, fuck it, I'll come on. Well, look, here, here here's your here's your fuck it, I'll come on moment. Go ahead, whatever you wanted to say, sir. And I, by the way, I, I appreciate you coming in. Oh no, man! Like, and just because of the, I guess the narrative of the conversation, I'll I'll admit to you, like, yeah, I've I have trolled my. Asshole. asshole and, and it's <laughs> it can't be fun <laughs> it is super fun but you know when i hear conversation like this that i want to engage with that's like wow like this could be fun like yeah i'm just me you know i'm not the troll i'm just like well no i i, I like that because there was, there was a jets fan that came on a couple weeks ago and he found on the feed and he said it popped in and he's a Jets fan. And I'm like, okay, well, that that's strange. It's like, welcome to the show. And I can't remember what the what the guy's name was, but he's a Jets fan. And and the first words out of my mouth is when he said a Jets fan. I said, let talk to me about Aaron Rodgers and the vice president nomination thing with with Robert F. Kennedy. And and I very rarely I don't I don't talk politics. I don't talk religion because you're going to lose a lot of your audience. But he went off on shit, and it was fun. Because he did, he went he went a 
kind of over, but, but he was fun because he was, I, I he might have started being a troll, but he wasn't. And I had a fun conversation with him. So I hope he comes back. I hope you come back. Anybody who wants to talk sports, we'll talk. And when when there's no sports to talk about, we'll talk movies. We'll we'll talk because I've I've talked movies and TV and and other unique shit because sometimes there ain't sports to talk about. But as long as we steer clear. Uh, stuff that is kind of like it's going to divide people. I, I don't mind doing, yeah, but you're but you're, but your your college basketball. One last, your, your final thoughts, sir. I, I I please. I talk a lot too, so apologies here. Come on, we get give me your best out the door, sir. And college basketball. Yeah, no. You when you said I was going to come on, it, it was probably because it, it, I threw Petrino at you, or I threw uh, Arkansas football at you, and you were going to do something. You were going to say I came on to talk about this, and see, I diverted you. Right, like it, we got on the the football tip, but what like I guess captivated me was you know the basketball aspect, and mm-hmm. um, you know, I asked the question of like. All right, you're the GM of all time. Who do you pick first? Mm -hmm. And and for me, like, MJ is so much like, what, 95% of the answer. It's, and, and rightfully so. Like, it's MJ. Like, that dude sold probably $23 million of shoes today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hasn't been in the league for I don't know how long. That aside, though, like, my concept is if you needed two points from an individual all time, you know, who do you go to? I go to Shaq. I mean, he shot, what, 60% from the floor? He didn't shoot shit from the free throw. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, and it's such a mind fuck. It's like Shaq, you could shoot a short jumper. You just just pretend that there, that line's not there, and just the line's gone, Shaq. Just shoot it. But if it if it's straight in front of the fucking basket, he could. And I like Shaq. I used to, I watched Shaq when he's with the Magic because I'm from Orlando originally, and I love Shaq. He's such a great, engaging guy. Him and Penny together. Unbeatable. Yeah, and you throw uh, Dennis Scott. They should have beat the Rockets when they when they played him in the chip because you had Shaq and Penny and D uh, D three or three D three whatever Dennis Scott's name was. But it was wonderful. But Shaq couldn't cat couldn't get fucking engaged until he went to the lake. And yes, if you needed two, but still, if 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 I'm saying I need two points, I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to Mike. All right, I'm I'm gonna call a foul on that. <laughs> Look, Shaq was an animal that we had never seen in Orlando. Yeah, big dude that could get up and down and just dominate. I mean, both sides like he everything that you wanted in a center. Uh huh. But- Back then, they still had the center position. Is it still alive today? I don't know. But um, it's a dying breed. It's a dying breed. But when Shaq, you, you got to think about this, though. What do you, okay, don't even think about it. Don't pick it up. Just first thing to enter your brain. All mm-hmm. right. How much does Shaq weigh in Orlando? Um, Three, actually, he might not have been three. It was probably like maybe 280, 290, right? That's high. That's high? Okay. That's high. In Orlando, that's that's hella high. Okay. But it could have run a four or five in Orlando, for real. But when he put that weight on, yeah, seven two, man, come on. This dude, like, I remember the dunk. It was uh, against New York where... Was it over Ewing? No, it wasn't Ewing. Okay. Uh, It was this white dude that got pissed off because, like, when he dunked on him, he wrapped his legs (laughs) and then pushed... 
Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? I, I vaguely recall him. Just, he was he was posterized. That's why I asked if it was you, I, you or not. Horrible. And he, the guy threw the ball back at Shaq. <laughs> it was crazy. Now, Chris, I got I got to ask you, but before before uh, and granted, unfortunately, Kwame Kwame left. Kwame, I'm very sorry, sir. But uh, hopefully, hopefully Kwame will come back as well. I got to ask Chris while he's here, your age, because again, it, it's a generational thing. Correct. I, I, I've, yeah, I, I, we had a huge debate about that. In fact, like we were talking about how Disney and ESPN creates that, but I get what you're saying. But what's your question? No, how old are you? I'm sorry, I'm 38. I don't know. Damn, 38. Okay, okay. See, I got you by 21. When I when I was legal, actually, I was legal at 19 because in the state of Florida at the time they they grandfathered it, so I could drink legally in the state of Florida when I turned 19. So, but I got you by 21 years, just like a couple of weeks ago, actually a week ago. Um, so I'm 21 years your so when I was legal, legal everywhere, you were popping out somewhere, okay? Because your mom says, Chris, it's time for you to get, get out of here and get on with your life. And, and she boom, and you popped out. And but so I'm that much older, but I try to I try to recall being I, I try to be a pretty cool old dude that talks sports with everybody. I don't care what, how old you are. And that's why people kind of, when you, when you go old basketball, I said, well, do you know uh, Bob Cousy? Do you know George Mikan? Do you know, you know, the, like Cousy with the, with the, or George Mikan with the Lakers when they were up in Minneapolis, you know? Cause I, I said, where are the fucking lakes in California? There are no fucking lakes in California. The Lakers came from Minneapolis, right? Because people don't know this shit. Oh, I'm a Lakers fan. Well, do you know where they were from? Yeah, in Los Angeles. I'd say, no, they're not from Los Angeles. They're from fucking Minneapolis. Because George Mikan was a, was a Minneapolis Lake. Because people don't know shit. They don't know history. And that was even before my time. But I say, for you to respect sports, you got to go beyond what you know and what you've seen. You got to look at it and know the history behind other things. Now, Chris, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask this. Who do you like in professional football, or, or are you just a pure college guy? Basketball, You're... basketball, football, what? Yeah, whichever. Uh, pro basketball and pro football. As far as football is concerned, I'm more college oriented. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm more pro. Like I love where you know my Arkansas boys land. Mm -hmm. I, I keep damn good track of that. Like I'm a this year I'm a Bucks fan, but people are like, oh, you getting on the bandwagon? No, I'm not getting on the bandwagon because the Celtics are killing everybody right now. One and two, it's because we got two Razorbacks on the period. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you know, as as far as keeping up with that stuff. I I don't know man I just my 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 thing is like I got to because look it's the same I fought in the same gym at the same time that Jermaine Taylor became the middleweight champion of the world Okay did I ever spar with Jermaine? No, because Jermaine at that time, I was 16, mm -hmm. his gym. And he was out, I don't know, in Florida or something, getting ready for the Olympics. He came in. I've, I have sparred with everyone, everyone, minus Terry Smith, because he was too heavy. He was, he was our heavyweight. He was a champ at one mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Everyone, everyone in that gym I had sparred with. I didn't, I didn't do too good with any. <laughs> hey, but, but but here's the point though. 
you survived and you have the stories to sell. I sparred with X. And look at how pretty you are. I don't I don't see any I don't see any big marks on your face. I don't I don't hear see cauliflower ears like Randy Couture has. You survived, man. And you're you're uh, okay, you said you're 38, right? So you you're 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 pushing 40. And and you're you survive you're a champ and you can say I sparred with blah 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 I survived and you have the stories to tell and it's great it's great man I don't even remember what the question was what what, what about about you know that you survived and and and, and with the sparring and, and with your main tailor and all the things like that because of, of because of your Arkansas ties right you know? yeah. right so I, and it's good on you man I sit down. I'm not going to say this to piss you off. I swear. This is not a, this is not a gotcha. Que- this is not a gotcha question. It's not, it's going to sound like it, but it isn't oh. since Jerry Jones. It, I, you knew it was coming because it was Arkansas. She's Jerry Jones is Arkansas proper. What are your thoughts on Jerry Jones? Man, my thoughts on Jerry Jones is we really don't know. And because anybody that sees this is like, oh, you did this. No, it doesn't account for it. So that being the preface, I don't know how Jerry Jones made his money and when i say his money i'm not talking about everybody that can go google how did jerry jones get his money you don't make the money that google is going to tell you right yeah i i agree i agree he fucking stadium he spent three something billion dollars in an era of a recession. How? Okay. Yeah. Google explained that. God damn. Well, if, if Google could explain it, the people that would fact check it would be, uh, what's the best way to say this? Offed the very next day. And they would be, they would be, they would have been Clinton. And there, there's another Arkansas name for it. They would have been Clinton out of existence, right? Because the, the people keep shit down. We're pulling out everybody. <laughs> you know, look, we have other names in Arkansas that we could talk about. I yeah. Think, like, 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 how, like what, hey, what do you feel? What, how do you like your governor? How do you like Sarah? Oh. You open up with Arkansas, uh, Pat. I'm go- I'm just I'm going with you, brother. I'm enjoying this conversation too, and I'm not giving you gotcha questions. I'm giving you questions right in your ballpark because it's interesting. I haven't had anybody from Arkansas come on the show before. Okay, you and just I'm- look in boxing. It was it would be called a one two three. <laughs> uh, like. A lead, a cross, and, a, and an uppercut, right? Is, is that it? No, it's a jab, right, left hook. Oh, okay. See, see, it's I don't it. know these things. You do. I, you do. I don't. That's why I'm enjoying the conversation because yeah. you, you know, so the jab and a hook. What's the third? No, no. A one, okay. So in boxing, right. like when somebody, like you're working mitts. Yep. Working you mitts. Know, or, if you got your trainer on the bag, yep, yep. One, that's the jab. Two, right hand. Three, left, four. Okay. Left, okay. Five, left body. Six, right body, and then uppercuts. So uppercuts seven, right? Right. In fact, like I don't know if I ever got to. I don't know why, but I don't know if we ever numbered uppercuts like it was just some shit that you did well when when you were and i'm 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 guessing by the time you hit the jabs and the hooks and you're working the body and then when they start dropping down 
to to protect the ribs. Again, I'm not a boxer, and I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I slept over at my friend's house right here in this room. So when when they're dropping down to cover the ribs, right, is, is when when they're going from here to here. That's when uh, uh, it was off camera. Sorry. That's when you go like this. I'm a righty, obviously. Boom. That's when you go right up into here, and and it sounds like or like the old what was the name of the game, the video game where you were boxing against Glass Joe. Mike Tyson's punch out. Okay, punch out. Well, before Mike Tyson got involved in it, it was just punch out. And then, and then Mike Tyson spot. See, I'm old. I knew it before Mike Tyson spot. It was punch out. And no, like, it was Mike Tyson's punch out first. Was it? Yes. And then okay. Charge. And Nintendo was like, Nah, I'm a, <laughs> we're gonna do this. You good luck. Uh, <laughs> it's later. Okay. Well, then I stand corrected. I know that it, he was yeah. not with it all the time. So no, thank I, you, thank you for correcting me. The the first I want. It was either like two. It was either two or three years. It was Mike Tyson's Punch Out, mm -hmm. and you know the end character, which I don't even know what his name was. I think like Mr. Dream or something after the fact, but it was Mike Tyson as the end boss. Mm -hmm. Okay. For like two or three years. And then Nintendo was like, man, we can't fuck with you. <laughs> and, and, and they probably, they probably didn't want to pay him royalties on the name. Right. That's probably why they squeezed him out. It's all money. I, at that point, I don't think it had shit to do with that. I think it had everything to do with, Nintendo being affiliated with somebody that was at the time alleged of rape. Ah, see, see, I, I, Chris, this is good shit. This is good shit. That's why I enjoy conversations with people because I learn and I try to make people learn from me, but now I've learned from you that that's something I did not know. Yeah, I mean, awesome. I mean, we we can look this shit up. I I don't know it off the top of my head. Uh huh. Um, you know, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Shit, I remember a Nintendo when I was five, four, three, four, and I was born in eighty five. So in eighty nine, I remember Nintendo, mm -hmm. and very very shortly after, I remember Punch Out. So, you know, early 90s, Mike Tyson's punch out. Mm -hmm. Look, it, we could put a Vegas line on over under on when, and I won't look it up until okay. we get official. Uh -huh. As far as like, when did Nintendo drop Mike Tyson from punch out? Okay. If you want to put the line, sir, you're more than welcome. Well, Chris, I, I, I will I will tell you this because you're new to the show. I may I don't I go to I go to Vegas to watch the Raiders play, right? People thought I had a gambling problem when I was at work because I I would put on where are you gonna be for the weekend? I'll be Vegas, baby. They, so they knew where I was, right? So they were going to stop, they were gonna have somebody come and counsel me. And because they thought I had a game. I'm like, no, I don't go to Vegas to gamble. I don't go to Vegas to drink. I don't go to Vegas to consort with, you know, with, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I want to want a piece of, no, it'd be great if I had the money to do that. I would, but I, uh, that would be probably the only thing that I would do. It wouldn't be gambling, wouldn't be drinking, you know, but none of that. But it's like, if you, so if you give me an over under, I don't know, I don't gamble. I lay $350. This year, through my friend in Vegas, on some of the bets that I made for the Raiders, that I won some. It was the over under on wins, and I won twice. I lost the other shit because it's like Vegas, you're Raiders ASC West champs. No, it wasn't. They, Raiders in the playoffs. No, I lost on that. They, Raiders obviously winning the Super Bowl. Obviously lost that. If it would have been, if there was a prop bet on the last team to beat the Chiefs, I would have won. Great on that, but that wasn't a prop bet. 
But so if you give me an over under on anything, I, I look at you like I don't. I know that the screen is well. I look at you like I don't fucking know. <laughs> but well, but see, this is why I talk because people learn shit and they learn stuff from you as well about you know the Nintendo thing, why it was squeezed out. That's right. cool. And I I don't I don't I don't remember numbers. Hell, like I said, I'm I'm 38. I'm losing my memory as it is today but mm -hmm. uh, i i would imagine that the contract fallout between nintendo and tyson was and i could so easily just google like when was tyson arrested for rape and it would give me a specific date right, right? and that and that's what that's what georgia said is that it was before the criminal charges because they didn't want to be associated with the right. it, it wasn't even the the conviction it was the indictment and the indictment yeah so the i think hell if i had to pick a year out i would say 91 that was the split but i might be a little high on that well uh, georgia also said and he's uh, and, and georgia is one of my one of my regulars Great. I get a lot of good information from the from the comments because I'll ask something and I say, well, who did I did it all for the nookie? And I got two answers, Limp Biscuit. I'm like, oh, see, good. I, I don't need a board op if I was in a radio station. I don't need a producer because the audience is my producer. They look shit up for me. And Georgia said of uh, the Google be, be, because Tyson lost to Douglas. So when he lost to Buster Douglas, that is. Absolutely not true. Okay, well, I'm just reading what he said, sir. Yeah, I, I don't. That has nothing to do with it, because it, if you want to take that route, that a loss can cost you a, a contract with the video game company. Tyson was fighting on games that were developed for PlayStation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, like. This dude hadn't fought in I don't know how many years, and PS4's got him on, you know, fight night or whatever. Mm -hmm. I I don't I don't. It, it was completely because of the allegation of rape. Okay, well, again, I don't I don't doubt it, you know, because we'll get information from as as I can get it. In and, fact, and, and I enjoy I enjoy the, the discourse of who of who says what right. the information and, is. And let, let let's take this a step further, just for something that's like of evidence. Okay, mm -hmm. um, when was the Buster Douglas fight in Japan? And when was the rape allegation? in india indiana i'm sorry mm -hmm. it, and what's crazy about it because this is the only thing that could substantiate that claim is that they were so close you know what i'm saying it's like he lost in japan he goes home and then he gets indicted mm -hmm. so you could say it's Buster, but it wasn't Buster. Well, and 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 this is the great this is the great segue to put this all together, because when he lost to Buster in Japan, he was also influenced by the song Limp Biscuit. I did it all for the nookie. What the nookie? What the nookie? What the nookie? What? Because Tyson was like that's why Tyson was out in Japan not in his proper boxing straight of mind. He was doing it all for the nookie because he thought Buster was going to be a, a, you know, like a, a, a three second chump, just like everybody else was. Right. And, and Buster, good for Buster, took the fight seriously and did what he did. Yeah. Buster put that work in. Yeah. I've seen the fight. I don't know how many times. Um, and yeah, I will say this. Okay, th this is my narrative of the fight. Did Buster win that fight? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ab 
every fucking round, damn near. But he was on that floor for more than 10 seconds, though. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and this gets into the whole admin politic bullshit of boxing of, you know what I mean? It's like, it's no different. And again, I'm not trying to stray away from your conversation, but it's no different than when Timothy Bradley fought Manny Pacquiao. And when Timothy Bradley was awarded the, the decision over Pacquiao, I was like, oh my God, like what parallel universe am I in that this is happening? So I, I, I literally, as a judge, you know, my trainer, my trainer, uh, judge three WBC title fights amongst mm-hmm. others, but that that's, that's his accolade, you mm-hmm. know, like, and so I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this shit and I'm going to judge it as if coach told me to judge it. And I'm sitting here watching. <clears throat> There's no knockdowns, mm-hmm. right? So ten eights, ten nines, nine nines, or ten tens, or whatever the hell, but no ten eights, all right? I get to the tenth round before I'm like, I mean, I could have gave that to Timothy Bradley. <laughs> the tenth round, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. And it and what was more crazy about that, what was more crazy about that fight is that there was a judge on that panel that voted for Timothy Bradley beating Pacquiao when Pacquiao ain't lost a fucking round until the tenth, if maybe that. Mm-hmm. He no no. Steve, uh, what was anyway? That same judge said that Canelo Alvarez beat Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> okay, I yeah. Can't look, if I was the great American author, I can't make this shit up. <laughs> but- <laughs> Chris, I got I got to ask you, by the way, have you seen I was on hiatus for about a month because I was in uh, CDL school and then I was on vacation. And one of the people that were doing my show, if you go through the past shows, gentleman by the name of Raider Transplant, Angelo, what he was in, he was a, a trainer in boxing and MMA. OK, he trained these guys and he knows Pacquiao real well. He knows his uh, uh, his trainer real well because Angelo is Filipino. Obviously, Manny's Filipino, so they had that tight community there. If you want to, if you ever want to talk boxing, um, when he had he eventually, and I say eventually, he's going to have his own YouTube show, right? So when he does, if you if you follow through here, and you'll see Angelo Raider transplant. He's called Raider Transplant because he had a, a liver transplant and he had about 60 days to live, got his liver transplant, and he's he's alive and kicking and with us right now. Great guy, but a great boxing mind. So if he if and when he ever does have his own channel, make sure you follow him. And honestly, don't hey, don't go away from me. I'm not gonna lose you. I'm not gonna lose you, I hope. And you can come in and talk whatever you want because, again, we talk what you want to talk about. But I just wanted to make sure because you, you've you been very um, specific on boxing issues. I, I was like, make sure you keep with us. And if there's nothing else going on in sports, you can, you can say, hey, let's talk about whatever this next big fight is. I'll be more than happy to talk about that because, like I said, three inches deep and – Three miles wide, I will be able to talk to you about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. Very cool. I like that. But, and, you know, I came on here because of basketball, and we just, like, 
got into everything. But well, we segue we we because we've had a good conversation, sir. Well, you know, I, but again, I don't want to be the one to divert wherever because, of course, this is your show. I, no, 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 Chris. This is that I am like uh, Miss. I'm like uh, Mr. Uh, Spicoli. Sorry, Spicoli. In fast times at Richmond High, did you, did you ever see that, or am I dating myself? Uh, you said Richmond. Fast times at Richmond High. Sean Penn in a movie that came out in about '83. Now, granted, I know that you were in '85. Look it up, okay? Sean Penn before Sean Penn was big, okay? Ray Walston plays Mr. Han, who is Ray Walston was my favorite Martian in the '60s. Okay, I know I'm really dating myself, right? Bill Bixby was the guy that Ray Walston lived with in My Favorite Martian, and that was before Bill Bixby was the character on The Incredible Hulk. Again, old shows, old, old shows, right? But get it, going back to point, Fast Times at Richmond High, there's a line in the movie, right? And Sean Penn's trying to be this real sarcastic asshole about, you know, Mr. Hand is this really uptight teacher in class, and, and he's like, how dare you waste my valuable time? And then Sean Penn says, well, Mr. Hand, if if you're here in class and I'm here in class, doesn't it make it our time? It's our time, Chris, because we're talking. It, it might be my show, but I don't have a show without people coming in to talk about it. So I appreciate I appreciate the, the positivity, but I don't have people talking to. I don't have a show. So it is our time. It's our show. And then he also said, you're right, Mr. Piccoli. It is our time. And then the, the guy had pizza delivered, right? He goes, I think we're going to need to have some pizza on our time. So he takes out a piece of pizza and he picks out all these other kids in the class and they all eat his pizza. It was Piccoli's pizza. And he got all pissed off. It, 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 like I said, it's, it's go look it up. Fast Times at Richmond High. Forrest Whitaker before he was famous. Okay. He, Sir, I, I, you, you can't. For, Forrest Whitaker is one of my favorites. Forrest Whitaker, when he was was an unknown actor, was in that movie. Okay, Judge Reinhold, right? It was in there. Okay, before he was big and famous. Sean Penn, uh, Stoltz, before Stoltz was was a was a big actor. Nick Cage, before he was known as Nick Cage, he was actually still known as Nick Coppola. In the movie, because he's he's a he's a nephew of Francis Ford Coppola. His credits are Nick Coppola. Nick Cage is in that movie. There's a shit ton of people in that movie. So come in, go watch that movie, and then come back another time and say, Cap, I watched Fast Times at Richmond High, and and I I enjoyed the fuck out of it. I hope that's what you want because it was an enjoyable movie for me as a teenager in '83 when I was a senior. That was the, that was the fucking movie to go to. So obviously that you know the mindset's going to be a little different because you were born in '85, but when I was a senior in '83, that was the fucking movie, man. So look it up, enjoy it, and hopefully you will, and come back and see us another time, and and I, I and you can tell me about it along with other things we're going to talk about. All right, Fast Times at Richmond High. Fast Times at Richmond High. Look it up. I will. I will do that. Hey, uh, Chris, I've enjoyed our talk. I got uh, Capitan Rafucho, who is a, uh, a, a, a Raider fan. That's also He also has his own YouTube channel. Uh, Ca uh, Capitan Rafucho, I think he's, he's from Colombia originally. And, and he, he's, very, he's very proper and very, very, uh, like he's very learned. He like will spit out good things from, that he hears from about in sports. He's got his own channel. He's in the back room. Hopefully Kwame will come back because Kwame dropped out. Hopefully Kwame will come back. But Chris, I can honestly say thank you for coming in. I'm glad that you that you when it hit your feed, uh, we you came in. Have all three of us? You got to keep me out. Well, only because I enjoy one on ones. Whenever okay. I do, whenever I do a three screen, it it, it gets too involved. You uh, know, it gets too involved. I prefer. A one-on-one -on -one conversation. That's the only reason why. Oh, and the only time I will do like a three screen is if there's like 
the two people that I know know each other and they want to talk about something that's similar or they want to have a debate with me in the middle, kind of like being the debate person, I will do that. But most of the time, it's it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. That's what I, I pride myself on. Awesome. But I will say this, though. I'm going to bring them on before I, before I hit you backstage. Uh, Raphael. Raphael, are you there? Rafa. Oh, oh my. Oh, okay. That's not good. That's okay. That that was that was a troll. That's not that's not Capitan Rafucha. That that that's another troll. Because I know Capitan Rafucha. That's obviously not Capitan Rafucha. And you know, because I told you before, like, yeah, it it was hilarious and fun to troll before, but I never like this whole dick picking stupid shit. Like that was that, that's not even fun. Like, no. how is that even creative? Yeah. You know, like when I trolled, it was, it was like, <clears throat> it was because something had a, some sort of significance, you know, like for example, they're, they're doing construction work here in my neighborhood mm -hmm. on the gas line. And, you know, I, <laughs> I trolled the gas company. I was like, I think you fuckers blew up our gas. <laughs> but I don't I, I just don't see how anybody is like laughing at the fact that we saw a dick. Like we see it every day. It's our own. It's in the toilet. So Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and Georgia was also said for said I forgot. When I'm mentioning actors, and I, I will put this in here. Do you know who Phoebe Cates is? Phoebe Cates. Phoebe, Phoebe Cates. I can't say I do. Okay. Phoebe Cates was in, in she was also in Fast, Fast Times the Original on Time. She was like a, a pinup gal for, for my generation, right? In the movie, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. But when you watch the movie, you will be pleasantly surprised in a good way as a male. In that movie, watching the movie, watching Phoebe Cates, I will just say it's the pool scene. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to leave it. That is another, that's extra incentive to watch that movie. All right. Favorite movie of all time. My favorite movie of all time is a very obscure World War II movie. Uh, it's called Where Eagles Dare. It's it's a uh, it's a war movie about intelligence and espionage and double agents with Clint Eastwood when he was young, right right around the time he was doing the spaghetti westerns, you know, good, the bad, the ugly, and and for a few dollars more around that time it was sixty eight, right? He just gotten out of doing the spaghetti westerns, so it's young Clint Eastwood, and Clint Eastwood with Richard Burton in a World War II flick about agents and double agents and shit like that, because I'm a history guy, my favorite movie. Very cool. And, and right below it, and I know you've seen it, okay, but again, it's an old dude's movie, is Patton with George C. Patton. Scott. George C. Scott. So that's my one in one A. Okay. Those are my two favorite movies. What, what's your favorite movie? Well, I got you on here, too. Can I have a one and one A two? Can you do what? Can I have a one? Yes, I, I I cheated. I I said one and one A. So yeah, you can have a one and one A two. All right. Uh, and this is this because I've seen so many movies after this movie that were so much better, but this is like loyalty to me. So it was like I don't think I'll ever give up that this was the best movie for me, but it was uh meet Joe black. Yes. Hopkins and uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Claire Folani. Mm -hmm. It was, that was an amazing, amazing movie. And even today, like I put it, I put it on like you would put on like, uh, like sleep music like oceans crashing or rain or some shit 
but I still I still watch it to this day. Okay, and yeah. I I've, I've seen it. I I probably have seen it from start to finish one time, but I've seen bits and pieces of it at other times. It but is, yeah, but that that is a great that is a great film. It, it's like three plus fucking hours. I can't. Yes. Who has the focus in 2024 to watch this shit? Nobody. But, um, you know, back back then, that that was by far. It it just it hit me. It, look, I've been married, and I was married because I thought at the right time, at the right place, I met the right woman. And that was kind of like this movie. It was like it was a profound movie that came out at the right time in the right place for my life. And I was just like blown away by it. Not I mean it was just it hit me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> let me take you on the other side of this coin. No, 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 no. You're gonna go one A, right? Because you had one yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, one yeah. A. Oh, <laughs> But you'll hear the comic relief when I tell you the answer. Okay. Is meet Joe Black is one. Uh -huh. A would be when Denzel remade Man on Fire. Great film. Great <laughs> film. Um, was it was Dakota Fanning the young girl in that one? Yes, she was. Okay, yeah. And her mom. Uh, her mom was a pretty well-known actress. I can't remember who it was, but. And, uh, hell, who's the Puerto Rican salsa singer? Uh, Mark Anthony was the dad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Anthony was, he was the, he was the, the bad guy, right? He was the, uh, the guy that was trying to kill him. Right. Well, I mean, I wouldn't call him a bad guy as much as he was like trying to, you know, run a grift on his own daughter. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I knew that there was something kind of shady about it. I just couldn't remember exactly because I, I that's been a while since I've seen that one too. No, he he made this thing that uh yeah he was gonna have somebody kidnap his daughter because he had kidnapping ransom insurance, which look, I sold insurance for over 10 years and I <laughs> fuck out of here like and and i lived in mexico for two years mm -hmm. and 38 years later i've never heard anything this fucking stupid but uh anyway the story is he he allows people to kidnap his daughter because he's got kidnapping ransom insurance and he's in the hole with his business so like you come get my kid Insurance gives you money. I get my cut. Everyone's everyone's happy, and I get my kids. Everyone's happy, but that's not what happens. Yes, and Denzel pretty much just burns down Mexico. <laughs> hey, you know it. Some some of that shit. Look, that movie was wild. Mm -hmm. Okay, that movie was like, I mean, shotguns and explosions and nightclubs and all this other dumb shit. And I'm like, okay, that's a little maybe over the top. But when I was in Mexico, man, I will tell you, that shit ain't too far from. <laughs> no, no, I, I yeah, I, I've been, I've been in third world countries before. In the military, and yeah, the things that you said with though that's that's too outlandish. It's like no, it's not. It, it, it's it's close to home. Uh, I mean, I was in Mexico in two thousand six and seven, and you know, so when I was down there was when Vicente Fox lost to Calderon. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody cared because uh, Chapel was pretty much the president. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he he was he was the he was the de facto president 
with with all the pals. It, yes. it was it was so stupid, man. I saw so many. I saw Lamborghinis getting pulled over in Starbucks's, and you know, just I don't know it. I don't have anything to like reference it to here. And I live in fucking Little Rock, Arkansas. Like HBO came probably to investigate Bill Clinton on his bullshit when he was governor here. Mm-hmm. Was yo, this place is out of fucking control. Mm-hmm. Let's make a uh, gang banging in Little Rock. And they just brought the whole set and were like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I mean, I I live here where it is shit city and in Mexico man it, I I can't describe it I I really can't like they uh there was one time there was a there was a journalist that put this I don't I, I have no idea what the what it was about but there was a journalist that put an article out in a paper and uh like within a day or two her head was literally decapitated and sitting outside of the newspaper building that she worked at with the letter like Write more. <laughs> no, no. Like I said, a, a third world, especially in Latin American countries, you know, are beyond scope. If you've never been there, and that since I said since you live there, you know what reality can be and and what it, what it is what it was for you as well. What what part of Mexico did you live in there, Chris? In uh, Guadalajara. Okay. Well, I lived in, uh, it, it was a neighborhood called, I don't know if this is a neighborhood or county or whatever, fuck, but it was Zapopan. And uh, I went to the University of, how do you say this in English? The University I don't know how to say this in English. I went to La Autonomous, I, I, the autonomous, I don't, I don't, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't worry about it. It's horrible because in two years I went to a college that can't even teach me its name in English. <laughs> but no, that's, I went to La Autonoma. It was mm-hmm. a, they had a professional soccer team. It was called the Tecos. I got to see a couple professional soccer events there. It was, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a nice time, man. Yeah. Oh, David, by the way, one second there. David, uh, I want to say, he says, stuff, stuff, what's the topic? David, we, we started, because, because you're just coming into this, this is Chris, otherwise known as, uh, I'm sorry, Chris, that your, your, your YouTube moniker was uh, something pack. Delta, Delta. There you go. And we started. We started with 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 Arkansas football, and then we went to basketball. Then we went to the pro NBA thing. And who I would pick as as a as a as a GM. We touched on movies. We were talking about bo- we talked about boxing because you talk about the one two three. You know, so I know which ones. And, and Chris is enlightening me to different things. We talked about Mike Tyson's punch out. And then we also, uh, what else do we go into? Uh, well, we're presently on on Mexico because uh, Chris lived in Mexico. We were talking about third world shit. Oh, because we've talked movies. I went my movies, then he went to his movies. And then the movie that he had as his 1A was Denzel Washington's Man on Fire. Great film. So we were talking about third world issues in Mexico. So you're basically caught up now. <laughs> that was a recap. Well, I mean, right off the top of my head. Yeah, see, Asylum says thanks for catching us up. Yeah, and, and it's like, and as, as Chris doesn't know because he's new to the show, and if you are new, Dave, what's up? We talk about what you want to talk about, 
for at least five minutes. And, and Chris has been on a while. Why? Oh, oh, and you missed it. There was a troll that showed a picture of a penis. That's oh, yeah. the, that's the only thing that you missed that I didn't that I didn't say. There was that was a penis pic. That was a troll. I thought it was my buddy Capitan Rafucho. It wasn't. Hey, uh, Berendo, how you doing there, sir? So now you're caught up. Everything I said plus the penis pic, but which you didn't miss anything. So now we're caught up. And like if like people said, if you want to come in and talk about, oh, and and we oh we talked about. Uh, Fast Times at Richmond High, because uh, Chris had never seen it. And I said that he needs to see this movie. And we kind of went over Phoebe Cates. And I said, you got to watch Fast Times at Richmond High just for the pool scene. And for people that have seen the pool scene, they're like, oh, yes, I remember. So, uh, But I don't spoil it for Chris because he hasn't seen the movie yet. OK, so he's going to watch it. So. Now you are definitively caught up with everything you need to catch up on. Okay. And and uh your pick is oh David, is that that's the Alabama state flag, isn't it? There you go. Yeah. Uh, my pick is the state is my state flag. That's Alabama, so I know that. It's uh you said you were Navy, right? Yes, I'm Navy. Yes, sir. Well, uh, it's Delta Pack because my company and and basic was Delta 186. So Okay. Well, cool. Thank you for thank you for that um, fellow shipmate there as well. But uh, Dave, come on in. Asylum was here. Uh, Berendo Ball Bomber is here. Remember, this is a two hour show. I'm already past the time for the Northeast Streaming Sports that cut out about eight minutes ago. But you have about twenty minutes because I cut off right before two hours, so I can I can redo this show. And when I when I do the show, I'm gonna say introducing Delta Pack Chris. It'll probably be when I when I have a chance. Uh, uh, Chris, I don't know if you know this is what I'm actually going on a I'm on a road trip right now from Florida through. Uh, and I'm visiting people all the way from east to west Florida. I'm currently in Dallas in my friend's house, and I'm really? gonna be yeah. I'm going through. I'm gonna get out of here before the eclipse happens tomorrow because I don't want to burn my eyes. I, I, I'm going to be either in Las Cruces, hopefully. I'm going to hopefully watch the, uh, the 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 championship game in college basketball, hopefully, or at least listen to it on the radio, and then get some sleep. And then the next day I'll be in Arizona for a couple of days, and I'm going to San Diego and L.A. and NorCal through Fresno. Then I'm going to drop down go through Reno and Vegas, and I'm going to be going to uh, – uh, what do you call it? Uh, Lake Havasu. And after Lake Havasu, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm also going to the draft. So when I'm close to an airport about the 24th, I'll have to change my flight to go from wherever that airport is, go up to Detroit on the draft and go back. So if you ever, if you watch the draft, hopefully you'll catch a glimpse of me in my pirate garb when there's a Raiders pick. Last year, if you go to the Michael Mayer pick in the second round, they have a, a close-up, you know, a live video of me going batshit crazy happiness for Michael Mayer being picked as the tight end for the Raiders in the second round because that was a damn good pick. I really didn't think that. Well, okay. And if I – I do have to get this beef off my chest because I, I lived in Oakland for – it was very, very short-lived because – I hated Oakland. I hated the Bay Area, period. Well, it is expensive. It's, it's unique. It's different. It, oh, no. It's horrible. It's – look, I there's – I lived in Mexico for two years. I've had more culture shock in my life in two American cities before Mexico. Mm -hmm. One was Oakland. Because they're a bunch of assholes. And the other was Miami, where I was stationed in the Coast Guard. Um, but fuck the fact that Oakland doesn't know how to raise children, we'll call it, or have any kind of decency or humanity about them. All right? I'm pissed at Oakland. Primarily because Darren McFadden went to Oakland. 
Yes, he did. Uh, I, and notice I didn't talk to you about him yet, being being an Arkansas guy, but he was a fantastic running back for the Raiders. The Raiders fucking killed him. I mean, and I well, can't... well, him and him in the list, Frank Fracture, killed his career because the Raiders utilized him well, and when he was healthy, he was fantastic. But the list, Frank Fracture. Obviously, from over usage, you can blame that on the Raiders as well. But yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree with you in that point. Is that, that his overuse caused the li- was some of the reasons why he had that list frank fracture. But you, I, I've got to take some of the blame too because when he was at Arkansas under Houston Nutt, they ran the shit out of him too. I mean, they, through, yep. through injury. So I'm mad at the Raiders because like, man, this is probably, he is, he's the best except for D'Angelo. He's probably the best football product that we've ever put out. Raiders draft them and they're just, they're killing them. And I was like, well, we kind of did the same shit to him. So, Mm -hmm. But and and, and, th- and thank you for saying that because I was going to say he was overused in at, at Arkansas as well, along with the other running because they had a they had a triple headed running back right. before there, yeah. and they, they and all they did Houston Nut just ran these fuckers to death. Right, it was him, Felix Jones, and uh, the he wasn't but, a running back; he was tight end. But, but the uh, white the white guy though, right? Right, right. Uh, and he, <laughs> be honest, I think he probably had the best pro career out of all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, God damn, what was his name? Well, I know that uh, he was a quarterback for Arkansas, but he played tight end in the NFL. That much I remember. Who are you talking about? Uh, the guy that was, uh, he was a quarterback at, at Arkansas. But when he went to the pros, I think he went. I think he went to the Jaguars, and he played. He played tight end. Correct. He wasn't a quarterback here. Oh, he wasn't. Oh, okay. Um, I don't. the The three headed monster that you're talking about consisted of Darren McFadden, Felix Jones. Oh, and, and the guy that played for the Browns, right? I thought it was the Bears, but. I th- yeah, I think it was the Browns. Okay. Um, and it wasn't a name. It was like letters. It was like TJ or some shit. I don't. Yeah, I, don't. I, I can't remember who you're talking about as well. Oh, by the way, David from being from Alabama. And, and, and he is of the other Bama clan. He, he's making sure that he that you know. He's saying war, damn eagle. And David, you're new to the show. I'm just going to say, you know, I just do this. That's chomp, chomp. So we're, we're, we're very SEC. We're very SEC here, sir. We're very Peyton Hick, Peyton Hillis. There you go. That was that was the kid that was drafted by hey, by the yeah. Browns. Yes, Peyton Hill. Thanks, David. See, but David remembers. That's why. I said, hey, David, since you're coming in, that's why I don't have a producer here. The people in the chat. Give me the information I need because the, uh, because I can't talk to somebody and look up the shit at the same time. Because you can do that in the radio industry. If I was the producer, I'll be able to do that. But I'm doing one-on-one conversations, and, and that's what I'm doing. But, yeah, Peyton Hillis. He actually was the uh, – he was a Madden cover for, for the football, Peyton Hillis. McFadden was. No, Peyton Hillis was too. Look it up. On what? On uh, on, on a, a man a man uh, and a, Hillis was the cover boy of man. Yes, yes, yes. You've got to be shitting me right I, now. I, I'm not kidding you. This I will look up. Hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up another screen. Okay, I'm gonna put in Google. Okay, Peyton Hillis Madden Madden cover. Yep. See, it came came up. Peyton Hillis Madden cover. Yep. Look it up. Twelve. So it would have been like 2012. Wow. Peyton Hillis. Yep. See, I what I I shit you not, sir. I would not give you bad information deliberately. That's crazy. And but you know it. 
before you said that, what I was going to say was, and it was arguable, apparently not now since he's on the fucking cover of Madden, but I was going to say it was arguable that Peyton had the best pro career out of all three of them. And I was like, no, that that's probably exactly true. And Felix Jones had a much better career than Darren. And this was the complete flip. Yeah. He went one, two, three. It was Darren Felix Payton. And now but it but in the pros, as far as what, what they what, what their performance was in the pros, it was Hillis Jones and then McFadden. Exactly. And that's and I don't think anything changed. I think that you know the Cowboys picked up Felix and Darren just got fucking beat up again under a shitty line and right in in Oakland. Yeah. And yeah, Peyton did have like a couple unbelievable years. Yeah, yeah. And and David David from Alabama, we, I was thinking of the quarterback, okay, that played for that played for Arkansas, and it was a quarterback. But when he went to the pros, he played tight end. Who is that guy? Matt Jones. Mac, thank you. Jones. Yeah, he he was before all that though. Okay. Okay. So see, th- this is why I, I have I have the conversations with people, and but I, I'm going to let you know, folks. We have about 12 minutes on a two-hour show. Okay, I keep it under two hours, so if I need to rerun them again, I can rerun them again because Streamyard only lets you keep it up to. One fifty nine fifty nine. The minute you go to two zero 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 zero, I can't run another show. Okay, so I, I want I want to make sure if you want to come in, like I said, Chris Chris has been giving us a lot of good stuff here, and David, who is a newcomer from Alabama as well, who says he's only twenty nine. So and this is so in, in case you're wondering, David, I'm fifty nine. Okay, Chris is thirty eight, and then. You're 29, so we got a big spectrum of age here. We got a big spectrum of age here. And again, Dave, thanks for coming in from Alabama. Who is the quarterback for the combo? I forgot. What combo? Dave, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what your question here. This is what the question was. Who is the quarterback for the combo? I don't Com- know. I, I don't I don't know, sir. Combine? Maybe the combine, right? I don't I don't know. For the com- for the combination of Arkansas for the combo of Arkansas. Oh, he was talking about when you had that three headed monster at running back. Who was uh, the quarterback? It was um, yeah. It, it didn't matter because he never threw the damn ball. Right. He all he and, did all his job was handing it off to one of the three running backs. And I I hate this, but. I remember this story more than I even remember his damn name is that we had a marquee recruit come in um, and he went off to USC because he didn't get to play as a freshman. Uh, What was his name? Damn, I gotta stop drinking something. (laughs) The, the kid came out of Fayetteville. Um, and because he got benched his freshman year, went off and played at USC and eventually became like a place kicker or some shit. Uh, Mitch... Hold, give me a minute. Um, yeah, and by the way, David, yes, uh, rest in peace to Ryan Mallett, who uh, came out of who came out of Arkansas, went went to the Patriots, and and lost his life within the last year to year and a half in a in a uh, a drowning accident 
uh, there. What could have been a really, and I'm surprised that he didn't go farther in the pros, but when he, when he went to the Patriots, it was just one of those things where he went there at the wrong time. And I, I think Ryan Mallett would have been a fantastic quarterback had he gone to a system that would have utilized him correctly. But th- those are, those are some of the things it's, it's not where you're drafted. It's, it's who drafts you for what system and what you have to deal with. That's just a personal thing there. He got his, he got his years in though. Like Ryan, if, like God, love him you know i i hate that he drowned like that but he he made it you know yes he did so uh but it was a mitch mustang that i'm talking about that was trying to take the spot and he not caught a lot of shit because this was like one of the top rated blah 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 quarterbacks in the nation and houston put him on the bench and the parents were like Okay, can I talk to the director of athletics? It it got to that level. Mm -hmm. Mitch left. Ah, So I remember that much. But the guy under center for the three-headed monster, man, Hey, before 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 you even bust your head trying to think of it, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna do. This is a SEC question for all of us, okay? Because David asks, "What are your thoughts on the new SEC format?" And if I'm not mistaken, they they still have the East and the West, but it's so convoluted as to who plays. You don't have those usual games that you have. It's been diluted because the amount of people that are in the SEC now, with the, with the influx of I think was it Texas and um, who are the other teams that came in, Oklahoma. Okay, yeah, you have Texas and Oklahoma, and you know that they're going to have the Texas Oklahoma game. That's going to be set. Okay, that one's not going to go away. Florida and Georgia is not going to go away. Uh, Auburn Alabama is not going to go away. Right. So, you know, those games, but the other games that are kind of like the the second tier, you might not see all the time, okay? You might not see Florida play in Arkansas, and they they would play them regularly each each year, but now you have so many teams in the SEC, you're not going to see some of those games that you would normally see, and it's unfortunate, but it's what comes about when you have a conference it gets so I, – I, I'm saturated in a good way, but it's like – because, again, yes, I'm biased. I the, My bias is showing. I still think that SEC is the best conference in, in college football because they have the best teams. Like, like uh, Chris was saying, the year that he was talking about, the SEC West had one and two and three because Arkansas was there, Alabama was there, and I think LSU was that third team that was it. That was one, two, and three. When you have one, two, and three in the United in the United States in the polls, and they're all out of the SEC West, you can't beat that for shit. And that's just the way it was. Right. Find me a a deeper conference app. Yes. But uh, to answer your question, like if in fact the question was what I think the additions that I I think they're great. I mean, we're, and I only think that because it's Texas and Oklahoma. Right. You know, if, if you were to tell me, like, we're going to give you um, University of San Antonio Community College. Right, right. You know, it was like, oh, come on, what are we doing here? But these were, this was the accolade. What was it? The Big Ten they came out of both of them. Mm-hmm. No, no, the twelve. They they came out of the twelve. 12. Folks, 12. we are at like a three minute warning. Okay, I know you have a two minute warning, but I have a three minute warning. I got, I got, I gotta, I gotta start doing the out the outtakes and and the outro on this because I gotta keep it under two. Chris, okay. I want to I want to thank you, sir, for coming in as right. as as a new viewer. Please come back again. Uh, David, who is my buddy from Alabama, thank you for coming in. Keep this on. Like I said, I try to do shows, even though I'm going on this cross-country trip. It's Sunday 
and Thursday, and then I also do a show on Wednesday for the for the AFC West. It's called Wild Wild West. Continue to come in. We talk sports. We talk movies. We talked a bunch of different. We talked Mexico, man. That that's the way shit was. And, and Chris, thank you for that smile, sir. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go because I got to do the outro. Chris, thank you for coming in, and David, thank you for coming in today as well. And all the other folks that are here, thank you for coming in. Well, we'll see you another time, Chris. Right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again, partner. I'm going to do the outro. Thanks again, Chris. And thanks again, Dave. Again, thank you for being here. This is the uh, Captain Jack show. Got to do the outro Sunday nights, nine Eastern when it's on time. It wasn't on time tonight, nine Eastern when it's on time, uh, Thursday nights, nine Eastern when it's on time, Wednesdays, seven 30 Eastern for the wild, wild West show. And, and we had a good time tonight. We had two hours, which I can use this if I get the hell out of here on time. I want to thank all the folks who were here, the folks that have been here, the regulars, and the, and the folks that came in new. Aside from the troll that showed his dick, literally. I don't, I, I, you know, it's a, it looked like a penis, but it was smaller. It, it's an old joke. Anyway, guys, take it care. Have a good rest of your week. I'll let you know where I'm at and I give updates on Facebook and Instagram. Good night, folks. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening.